following thoughts and opinions regarding this album are strictly of my own personal interests. I am not a professional music reviewer. I do encourage respectful discussion and friendly banter of each episode, but I do not condone and will not tolerate bullying or belligerence of any kind. Well, hey there, everybody. It's Chris from the Rate the Record podcast, episode 111. There's a lot of ones in that number right there, but that's okay. Thank you for joining me today. I'm your host, Chris, sitting here in this chair, in this studio, doing this music review with you, hanging out with me. So I thank you very much for being here. And I ask that if you like what you see and or hear today, that you do one thing, many things, or all the things I'm about to list to show your support for the show. Like, subscribe, rate, share, comment, and follow. All six of those things. A little bit of them or even just one of them truly do help your support means the world to me and i would love it if you did one of those things that just again warms this heart of mine i keep going knowing that you care about what i do so thank you very much if you do that and if you want to wait until the end too that's fine take your time i'm not going to rush you into it or anything like that and remember there's other places that you can do all of those things besides right here where you're listening and what and or watching this you can go to rate the record.ca that is rate the record.ca all the streaming links all the social media links merch links you can get stuff that looks like this so that's awesome too you can also join the rtr club for three bucks a month in the rtr club you get early access to episodes you get to request uh, albums for me to do for the show you if you have a song if you're in a band you have a song you want me to review it i will do it as a kind of kofi exclusive thing that could be really cool there's all the features too so by all means if you want to know more about it go check out rate the record.ca the rtr club link is in there as well Okay, I gotta get it all out of the way, but if you've been to this show before, you already know what I do, you already know how this whole thing runs, so welcome back, glad to have you here. Thank you very much for coming back and wanting to listen to another album with me and letting me know your opinion, I'm excited to have you back. But if you're new here, welcome to the show, I hope you enjoy your stay, have a good time here, and have fun discussing the music with me. I give you my opinions, you have this video or this audio to listen to about it, but I also want to hear yours. Let me know down in the comments below, but you can do that at the end of the episode. But regardless, that means you probably don't know what I do here. So each week on the podcast, I will choose an album. It could be whatever I want it to be. It could be a brand new release. Maybe it's a request that needs to be done. Uh, maybe the album cel- celebrating an anniversary. Maybe there's a special occasion. Doesn't really matter. Regardless, I will listen to the full album right here on this podcast. But just for the sake of not getting my ass kicked by copyright, you'll only hear it in a few second chunks throughout the podcast, but I'm listening to the whole thing. Listen to it from front to back. I give you my opinions about the songs. I'll give you my opinion about the entire album. And then, of course, the bread and butter of this entire podcast comes right at the end when I rank the songs and rate the record. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Yes, however you want to identify. That's exactly what we do here on the channel. I say we, I but I mean me, but you already know that by now. It's fine. We is just a... I think I I take I can't get rid of at this point, you know, five seasons with someone else really did that to me. But anyways, today for episode 111, there's a band that I've liked for quite a long time in my life, and they just released a brand new album very recently. It's called Call the Devil, and that band is called Mushroom Head. So with Mushroom Head, I've listened to, I think, probably since middle school or at least early high school. I've known a lot of their earlier works, haven't known a lot of their later works. So it was interesting when I heard they were releasing a new album. I didn't even know they were still around. So I was uh, more than interested to check it out and see how it is. But before we actually talk about the, uh, the songs on the album, let's find out a little bit more about the album itself. Call the Devil is the ninth studio album from alternative and industrial metal band Mushroom Head. The album was released on August 9th, 2024 through Napalm Records. For the sake of this album, the band consists of Steve Rockhorst, Scott Stryker Beck and Jackie LaPanza on vocals, Dave Gravy Felton and Joe Jenkins Gal on guitars, Ryan Dr. F. Farrell on bass and keyboards, Robert Roberto Diablo Godsey on percussion, Aiden Kerr on drums and percussion, and co-founding band leader Steve Skinny Felton on percussion, keys and sampler. Felton also produced the album, as well as every other Mushroom Head release to date. The album has produced two singles as of its release, Fall In Line and Prepackaged. So that was a little bit about the album at the very least, and now on the screen next to me here, for the video viewers, I have it on Spotify, the entire 
album songs one through 13 of this album i don't think i've listened to a full mushroom head album since save your sorrow came out in 2006 and then from there it was very sparse listening so i don't know what this band's going to sound like considering the lineup i was aware of is not even part of the band anymore for the vast majority of it so this should be interesting to say the least i don't want to talk too much more so let's just dig into it with song number one eye to eye Cool. All right. Song number one, Eye to Eye, to start off this entire thing. Uh, definitely a powerful enough start to this album. Uh, I mean, that, and that's good. You need that energy. Sometimes it's like kind of cool to have like a build up type thing. Uh, but this one works. And I know in a lot of different reviews, too, I say, like, you know, sometimes the first song isn't the real starter to the album. Like the second song is the first one. It's just that builder. I think this one just kind of gets right to the point. It is the starter. It works. I do like it. And there's a lot going on, too, with like textures and like background stuff to really fill out that soundscape pretty decently. So I do enjoy that much about it. There's actually a really strong, catchy course on this one, too. I mean, lyrically, uh, I don't really know what he's saying. I didn't look into the lyrics, so maybe I'm missing on it a bunch here. I don't know. But it was still a fun chorus. I still liked it. It still felt pretty big, so that's the important part here. I think my only real problem with this song in the end was the fact that the production, the breakdown felt strange, like the breakdown towards, like, just after the middle towards the end of the song. It sounded like the guitars were brought forward so much in the mix and then it just started clipping the meter. It, it was like a little too crunchy and like, listen, I like noisy. I like, I like all that kind of shit, but like this was weirdly crunchy and I don't know. It felt a little strange because other than that, the guitars were fine in the song, but just in that breakdown, it was just, I don't know. It was like, um, what was that Metallica? Uh, Death Magnetic where everything was just blown to fucking pieces in the mix. That's what that breakdown sounded like to me maybe not as bad but still anyways let's see what happens as we continue on with song number two one of the singles for sure fall in line all right song number two fall in line um there are things that I do generally enjoy about this song. I mean, it's more of that fast, pa uh, punchy action that we got in the, the previous track. You get this decent and slightly restrained chorus, which felt kind of nice. It's, it didn't feel like it was going way too, like, trying to... It, was, it wasn't It was trying to go too powerful and overboard, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and there's also the strings that really help the atmosphere of the track, too, so that was really nice. Uh, it was just more of a subtle part, but it did its part well. Uh, but the excitement definitely didn't match that of the first track because, I mean, it just kicked off so well. It came to this, which was the energy was matched, but I don't know. It just felt like a little bit more lackluster than the previous one had. So I don't know. It still didn't sound all that bad, though. Um, and kind of going back to a minute to the point where I said that, to be fair, I haven't heard a full Mushroom Head album since 2006, Save Your Sorrow. Um and also before that too, I've like listened to every Mushroom Head album, like the original one, Super Buick, uh, M3, uh, Double X, even though that was just a compilation album, uh, 13 and Save Your Sorrow. Regardless, uh, like that's the stuff I'm familiar with. And that's why I had to want to make that like clear with some of my notes here. So I don't know how their sound has evolved in the, oh my God, 18 years. <laughs> since I've actually listened to a full Mushroom Head album. That just hit me now. 18 years. Holy shit. Okay, anyways, I can't let that affect me right now. I'm in the middle of a review. Regardless, in that 18 year span, I don't know how much their sound has evolved, so I don't know if like this is matching up to the stuff that they've done recently, but I do recognize a lot of the compositional cliches that are in some of their older material too. It's very much on display. So I'm wondering if going forward in this album that they're just going to be playing it safe from here on out by playing to their strengths of what they know already. Um, but we'll find out more as we go along because we'll just do that right now anyways with song number three, Emptiness. There it is, song number three, Emptiness. 
and oh boy, those verses were rough. I think it, like, I'll say this, it comes down to the vocals, I think. I don't so much mind the music, although, like, I, I need to kind of collect my thoughts here. So I'll, I'll start out with the instrumentals then, because I said in the previous track that I felt like they were going to be playing it a little too safe, but for this song, they went for a softer, almost jazz-ish adjacent type of metal uh it's very reminiscent of smolder material too so if you go back to like super buick and listen to like the wrist or i guess maybe flattened maybe that to a lesser extent but still it kind of reminds me of that i think it was done well there like better there than it is here although there are aspects of how i like it here the drums are a little too far on the floor i wish there was more of a groove to it uh the clean strings are nice and the clean solo is good too but those vocals are not doing this song any favors at all. I mean, with those vocals, it sounds like like an edgy high school band type of track. And I, I don't really want to say that because it is kind of mean. But at the same time, like there's just something about the vocals in this track that just really just irked me. I'm not I'm not digging it. I feel like the background screaming was better than the actual lead vocals in this song. So I don't know. I wish they could have gone about this differently. Maybe got Jackie to sing. I don't know. That may, Maybe that would have worked out better, but just I wasn't digging it this time around. And because of that and the feelings that it, I got from that alone, any emotional punch this song was trying to throw, I think was just kind of like put flat on the ground for the most part like I, it just wasn't there so talk about emptiness i'm feeling a little emptiness with this track and what it should have done for me and then what it didn't do for me well let's see if things progress from here with song number four we don't care well they obviously don't care about my opinion that's fine they don't have to There you go, song number four, We Don't Care. Sure you do, sure you don't, I don't know. Regardless though, on to the song review. So like Fall In Line, yeah, the second song on the album here, uh, there are things I wanted to enjoy about this, but unlike that one, with this one, it's, it's, it's just really deep into that butt rock, butt metal category, and it hits so many generic and overplayed notes lyrically and compositionally that just kind of, I don't know, feels corny, a little cringe at times, very hailstormish too. Uh, I know I might piss off a few people by saying that, but I mean, whatever, that's not my cup of tea either, so what can I say? This song is also a good example of why having three vocalists feels like overkill. Not that any one of them sound particularly bad in this style of track. If anything, they all kind of suit the mood. That's fine. But it's weird how you have the all three and it's just kind of like you're throwing each one of these styles at the song and hoping something sticks. And uh, I don't know. It's, it just feels weird to mix around three vocalists. Two vocalists seemed weird in the beginning, but then I was like, okay, one guy's singing and one guy's just like screaming, growling in the background. That's fine. That works. I like that. And I mean, I like Alexis on Fire too, and there's other bands that do that as well, but three vocalists? I don't know. Now you're pushing it a little bit. I don't know. And I think maybe that this song is probably more catchy than I give it credit for, because it, it is. I mean, it's a very easy, accessible song, and I can see this... Uh, here, here's something I'm probably going to get hate for. This song is definitely something that appeals to the lowest common denominator. <laughs> and listen, there's nothing wrong with that, okay? I mean, that's what people say about, like, Nickelback fans and everything like that. But meanwhile, like, boom, they get, like, all this music all the time. And they get to have a great time. And they're having a great time nonetheless. And you can have a great time with this one, too. But for me, this one's just not punching. This one's not hitting. This one is weak. Uh, it's not the worst song on the album, I think, maybe, I don't know, but we'll find that out later. It's just not doing it for me. So hopefully the next song can, uh, song number six, oh, sorry, into song number five. Did I say number five before? I don't know. Regardless, song number five, I don't know if there's a pronunciation for this, but U-I-O-P, parentheses, a final reprieve. Uh, so, y yo yopi yopi yu yopi u i o p. All 
right in. Song number five, UIOP, A Final Reprieve. And at first, and then by at first, I mean like the first couple of times I listened to the song, I wasn't s- certain how I felt about like the theatrical feeling nature of this whole song. But I did start to enjoy it more as I went. So at the very least, it it, it got better for me over time, which is good. That's why I don't give these albums just one listen and then review. Like, you know, I do a few and then present my opinion on it. I think it's a fun way to present a song as long as you're not doing it all the time. Unless that's like literally the whole concept of the album, then that's fine. But I mean, if you're just throwing it in once or twice in, uh, in an album, that's fine. Don't make it like half the album, though. So I like this. I like where it is. I like that they tried something a little weird and different. It's cool. I'm cool with that. It is an interesting idea to put forward. It still did feel a little lackluster overall, though. There was there was a decent amount going on, but it felt lackluster. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's just me. And really hearing now, it, it, I mean, you could have heard this on other tracks too, but it's it just really popping up to me now how it sounds like, I don't want to say the singer is going out of his way to doing this. It's more or less the band replacing another singer for this one. But this singer sounds a lot like Jeffrey Nothing in a lot of respects. Uh, I mean, and also the the, sc- the screamers sound like J-Man too. Like they're trying to go old school. They replaced those two with two other people who kind of can sound or replicate them, which is maybe that's what you want to do, I guess. But I don't know. It just, it, sometimes it just feels like a little, like you're trying a little too hard for it. You know, it's like with Allison chains when they uh, replaced the uh, lane Staley all the years later, the guy's good. Don't get me wrong. But at the same time, it's just kind of like, uh, it, you, that, it's like a, it's like a safe step to make sure that no one suddenly forgets about the band. It's like, oh, he sounds like the other lead singers. That's good. And it's kind of the same with this one here. Where I'm like, it sounds good, but it's just, I don't know. It sounds like you're just trying to be them at this point. It's weird. And again, I don't think they're necessarily doing it on purpose. I, I have a feeling it was the band looking for people to replicate that sound. So maybe this note means absolutely nothing at all, but it's just, I don't know. It's like they really went out of their way to find someone. It's just like, oh, if we can't have you, we'll get the next best thing. Other you. <laughs> so I don't know. It, it it's a it's a fun song though. It grew on me. So I'm not I I'm not shitting on it at all. It's all good. We will move on now to song number six. Uh there was this one was another single, I believe. Uh prepackaged. Well, then there you go. Song number six prepackaged. You know, the first single I heard from this album was Fall in Line, and I, I can't remember if I said it or not, but like it kind of like threw me off and I didn't know what to expect. And I wasn't feeling too confident about it at the very least. If I didn't say that, well, you're hearing it now, regardless. This is the second single. And I didn't listen to it. And I kind of wish I did. This would have uh, bumped my hopes up a lot more because this one was a lot better. I initially love how heavy this one is. The super low guitars match with the bass on it, which just had a great touch to it. I thought that was fantastic. And as much as I enjoyed the first half, I think the second half uh, really did a lot for how I actually feel about this song. Around like the bridge just after the halfway point, although it's pretty minimal around there, I think it just sounded really good. I kind of like that whole just kind of like almost dragging section, I want to call it. Uh, So I'll take that for sure. Although one of my favorite parts is the fact that you just hear this like these vocals towards the middle of the track just yell go. And then it goes to the most lackluster guitar solo ever, which is funny considering that this song has like touches of industrial metal and even metal core at some points in it. So it just I was I was expecting something a lot more intense, which I don't usually pick on guitar solos. You don't have to like shred sweep and go fucking nuts to have a really good solo like you can have a very simple solo and have it be amazing for the song. It can just fit the mood. But this one was just kind of like, man, you should have did something else. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but so far, definitely one of the better tracks on this album at this point. At the very least. So I, I like where this is going. I wish I checked out the single when it initially dropped. But of course, I was just like, nah, I'll wait until the album review. Why not? Well, anyways, I heard it now. Happy that I did. And we can move on to song number seven, Decomposition. (laughs) 
Okay, so song number six, Decomposition. Uh, I, I guess they really took that idea that was in, uh, what, UIOP, and they just really ran with that ball with this very theatrical style. And although it's two very different kind of things, it's kind of in the ballpark of getting this, like, weird theatrical nearly cartoony sound it kind of reminds me of uh the faceless a little bit uh and i cannot remember the name of the album it's kind of like a pretty short concept album or not short but doesn't have many songs on it regardless it kind of reminds me of that in a way and like i know there's other bands who do this too but it's just it's it pops up in my head and it's just i don't know i again i there's a whole bunch of there's a whole gap of time of like mushroom head lore that i'm not like prevy to at this point i i remember that a song came out a long time ago called qwerty or something around that era of like the righteous and the butterfly i think it was that kind of had like you know this very weird i don't even know what they call it besides like theatrical cartoony like those two types it had like that feel to it too and so like i remember back then i'd feel like oh that's kind of strange that they went for that despite the fact that mushroom Head's done some very weird things in the past uh, so I don't know, like, I like what they're going for with this. I think it's interesting that they're trying all of this out. So I respect that immensely, but this one just wasn't hitting it for me all that much, especially as compared to UIOP. I think that one was a much better version of doing this style. Uh, but it wasn't necessarily a bad track. I'll say that much. Uh, one thing I really liked was the sub uh, subtle piano work. That was kind of going on behind the scenes and I like it better as compared to other tracks where it just seems to like pop out a whole lot more and it just like kind of stands too far forward in the mix. But this one was like a little more back. So it was nice. It added a lot to the music. I thought it was a nice little texture to have and I liked it softer moments. Pretty cool stuff. So not a fantastic track, especially when it compared to the other style of song that's on this album, which is UIOP. Not the worst song, but mm, just, it's not doing it for me. Maybe it'll grow on me. That's very possible that it will. But as it stands now, it's a meh. And so now we'll move on to song number seven, Grand... Wait, no, wait. Song number eight, Grand Gesture. Or not. Can't play current... Uh, okay. Okay, now it's playing properly. Let's go. Okay, with that like little dramatically sad outro there, song number eight, Grand Gesture. So with Emptiness, I said that it kind of felt like a throwback to something like The Wrist or Flatten from Super Buick. This one was definitely like a throwback to me from uh, the 13 album, the song One More Day. Uh, like as soon as the, the intro started, I immediately started like humming one more day in my head. So it's just, it's funny how many callbacks this album does. And I guess that's them kind of, once again, as I mentioned earlier, playing into their, like the safety of their own sound and everything like that, but like almost to a T. So it's, I don't know. It, it's weird that it was done on purpose, especially with like a lot of new members. So it's just, it's interesting that like, it just came down to these things sounding so familiar not necessarily that it's a bad thing either like i i don't mind that that's fine i like older mushroom head stuff so this one kind of like rings to me a little bit you know but yeah like that singer in his vocal mannerisms in the tone sounding like jeffrey nothing it's just i go back to that note of being like oh my god like they really went out of the way to find a guy who sounds like jeffrey nothing and like i know jeffrey had a very wild vibrato but like this guy is at least trying and you can hear it. It's it's crazy to me. I don't know. It's very, very interesting. Uh, I really like the instrumentals, too. I think it's great. The uh, the slower, heavier, kind of like straightforward progression feels really good at this point in the album. So I'll definitely take that. Uh, and the song is definitely more of a pleasant surprise overall, like in the overall view of this album, I should say. I like the drum in this one, and as mentioned, you know, I do like the instrumentals, those are good too, and despite being being nearly six minutes, yeah, five minutes and 50 seconds, like, it actually kind of flew by, like, nothing about it really bothered me, so, 
I'm I'm happy about this. It's good because again, I didn't know what to expect coming into this album, and then I'm getting good tracks like this, so it's always a pleasant surprise. Uh, I, obviously, the whole album has been like this up to this point, but I mean, it's just nice to have this. Okay, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna be happy with it, and hope that there is more to come, so we can move on to song number nine and find that out. It's called Hallucination. Okay, song number nine, Hallucination. That's a weird title to say, and I'm surprised I didn't mess it up once yet, but I've said that, and when I get to the song rankings, I'm going to stumble it like crazy. It doesn't really matter. We're here now. Uh, this is noticeably different when it comes to textures all over the track. You get your basic heavy run of instrumentals, and by the way, uh, th that chorus with uh, like the heavy ascension of the uh, progression there, I, I love that. I think it's great. Sounds fantastic. Again, very heavy, very nice. But even that like synthy ticking that was in the beginning, I really like that kind of thing. The, there's atmosphere escapes kind of swelling throughout the entire song, so I think that's really cool too. And even the run of tom drums that go through the verses are all quite welcome. And again, if you've... Oh, I can't say again because I haven't said it yet in this podcast but if you've been here through multiple episodes then i can say this again I, you know me i love when like tom drums are used to like move a verse or course along that's not necessarily just a fill i think it's cool it can be done right they did it right here i like it so i'm always gonna brag about it I, i'm not gonna uh, no that's the wrong word not brag but i am going to gush about it let's say that much um, it did start to feel like it was dragging before a little too long. It's only four and a half minutes too, so that's saying a lot. Uh, it could have been a minute shorter, would have been happy with it. But you know what? Overall, though, like this was still a pretty decent track. So I'm not going to like subtract points because it's like, oh, it should have ended earlier. No, no, don't worry about it. It's fine. Just a note. Uh, it was a pretty decent track. I enjoyed it. So let's hope this can stick. Uh, this whole good song thing can stick. That's what I meant to say. Moving forward with song number 10, Hideous. Hey, there you go. Song number 10, Hideous. I feel like the strongest parts of this song came out in the first half for me personally. Uh, it was definitely far more interesting overall at that point. I really liked that. The second half kind of felt a little disconnected, which is, I don't know, really unfortunate because I like what the first half was going for there. Uh, like, especially... It, it, it was the most industrial sounding song on the album as well. I like industrial music, so it'll stand out to me. And Mushroom Head has their origins in industrial music as well, so that's why I'm definitely making that tie in. And even in the verses, like there was like this kind of like like weird like little buzzy synth kind of just doing ascensions in the background, everything like that. And I'm a sucker for those like little synth things you could just pick out in the background like that. I think it's super cool. I like that. Uh, so yeah, that was all fun. But the second half, I don't know. Just started to feel like a whole different song at that point. It just didn't feel the same, so it's really unfortunate. And there are some parts, there are some parts in this track where I think the production sounded its best so far on the entire album. So I will say that definitely bumps the score. Like I think a lot of it comes in the choruses too, where the production just sounds like fantastic. Everything sounds super clean. Nothing sounds overdone. Just it's. I don't know. They nailed it on this song. It sounds good. And I, as I said before, I wouldn't dock score for a long run time. But, uh, you know, obviously production is something that'll alter the score. If this has some of the best score, well, guess what? It gets a bit of a bump in the score. You'll find out exactly what I gave it later because we still have to do, uh, what, three more songs, I guess. So song number 11, Torn in Two. All right, song number 11, Torn in Two. 
Uh, definitely taking it back to that more straightforward of the metal tracks that we got earlier in the album. Uh, it's fairly suiting considering that we're getting very close to the end of the album, so it, it feels like they're sandwiching it a bit, which is fine. That's nice, and you know what? It, it, sounds, it sounds fine. Like, I'm not even mad about it. On that note, though, there's nothing really stand out in this song that is until you get up to the bridge. Uh, I like the the clean strings that we get in those parts. I think that sounds really neat. And that match with the a lot of the percussion work that's going on. Like it sounds a lot more menacing than most of the parts of the song. And that's a lot considering that the majority of the song is pretty damn heavy. So the fact that that part sounds more menacing uh, is definitely going to intrigue me a little more. I just like the way it sounds. So a uh, very neat little bridge they got going on there. I couldn't imagine them doing any more with it because I, 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 one of my original notes was that I feel like they could have done a little more with it. But then as I thought about it more, it's like, no, you know what? It's fine the way it is. I like this. I, I, I like what it is. It's it's brief. It's a nice little different filler. Things feel a little different. So it's just it's nice to have. I don't know. I like it. So I did say very nearly at the end of the album, because we do have a couple more songs to go. So here's song number 12, Shame in a Basket. As it fades out, I will pause that song number 12, Shame in a Basket. You're really getting a theater of mind with that entire song, too, especially for the first little while, at the very least, because you get this long buildup of like dark piano, different soundscapes and even like a synthesized version of like crickets at night, kind of just panning left and right through your headphones and everything like that. Um, I, I like what they're going for. They're just like, again, they're, they're, they're being a little playful with this. It feels kind of interesting. I do like it. When I first heard it, I wasn't too certain how I felt about it. But again, like as I said, with uh, I think it was UIOP, upon multiple listens, I actually do like what they're doing with this. I, I enjoy it. And I also do like the back and forth of the the quieter, more like sentimental moments of the song put up against like the heavier and far more aggressive portions of it as well. It definitely keeps you on your toes because it kind of pops in like a different parts of the entire song so that's pretty cool with that said i will say i don't think the heavy parts did as much for the song as the quieter parts did i think i would have much preferred this song to kind of go out on a quieter and more unsettling note and actually on that too it would have been a really excellent way to cap the entire album i think it would have been fantastic i just got a notification on my computer get the hell out of here Thank you. <laughs> Don't worry, I'm almost done. D like, my computer's telling me to shut up, you're probably telling me to shut up. I'm almost done, I promise. But yes, it would have been better if it went out on a quieter note. Unsettling would have been kind of cool. Uh, was it really worth the eight and a half minute runtime? Ultimately not, but it is still a pretty decent song. I actually really enjoyed this one. I thought it was a lot of fun. I like for what they went for. I like for what they, I like what they tried in this one. Everything just felt really cool about it. It's a great way to cap the album, but as I already kind of mentioned, they didn't exactly cap the album with that. Instead, they capped it with song number 13, Doom Goose. I know Mushroom Head's known for doing some jokes in the music once in a while. And that's what the song was. Song number 13, Doom Goose. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't know what frustrates me more. <laughs> the fact that they put this at the end of the album because it's not a good cap to the album at all. If anything, you could have made it a hidden track. You could have put it somewhere else in the set list, but you made it the ender of the album, really? But I think the thing that makes me even more angry is... They definitely used a digital drum roll there when Steve Felton, is, aka Skinny, is definitely like capable of doing a drum roll. So it's like, come on, buddy. Don't get lazy now. It's the end of the album. Just put some effort into it. But yeah, I don't know. You can't even call this like an interlude in the album because it's obviously at the end. You could have made this an interlude at some point early in the album, but no, it is where it is here. It's a short theatric instrumental piece that would have been better popped up somewhere else on the album 
They should have closed it with shame in a blanket. They should have. But maybe it's their idea of not wanting them to take themselves too seriously. Like, I, I okay, whatever, I get that. But maybe that's why instead of making it a track, you make it a hidden track. Like, you know, you, Shame in a Basket's like eight minutes long, and then it's like two minutes of silence, and then you get this, and then boom, that's the end of the album. Like, whatever, that would have been far more preferable. Really, really, I, I think that would have been it. But that's okay, because we're at the end of the album now anyways. There's nothing more to listen to. That was 13 tracks of Mushroom Head's Call the Devil, their ninth studio album. And as I've already mentioned before, it's been a while since I've given Mushroom Head a try. And upon hearing Fall in Line, this is like, I mean, I'm just kind of repeating myself, but just in case you missed it before, upon hearing Fall in Line as a single, I, I didn't really have high hopes for the album. I was like, ooh, this is uh I mean, Fall in Line's not a terrible song, but if that's the lead single, I was a little worried. That wasn't until I heard prepackaged. But as it turns out, this album's not as bad as I was anticipating. Uh I was I, I had my mind in bad places for this one. It's not as bad as I was anticipating, but it's still not super fantastic, so it's going to fall somewhere in the middle. And when I say that on Rate the Record, God, what could that possibly mean? We're going to find out in a minute, because first, now i got to get Spotify off the screen, Arriva Dirty. Because now I have to bring up the numbers. I don't really want to do any more weird editing bits. I'm just going to reach over and grab it and pull it in. Get back there. There you go. <laughs> I give myself way too much work in video editing here. It's time to rank the songs. Here you go. One through 13 on the screen. Ready to have names next to those numbers because that's what it's all about now. I will not waste any more time. 13 through one. Let's get this done. 13. Emptiness. 12. Doom Goose. Yes, Doom Goose ranked higher than Emptiness. <laughs> Consider that for a half second. <laughs> 11 we don't care 10 decomposition 9 torn in two 8 fall in line 7 hideous 6 uiop 5 eye to eye 4 hallucination yes i didn't mess it up i thought i was gonna choke that one but i didn't good three for three number three grand gesture two Pre-packaged, which means number one was Shame in a Basket, the one that they should have ended the album with. I actually really enjoyed that song a lot more than I thought. I liked the bouncing back and forth of the quieter and heavier points. I liked a lot about that song. And pre-packaged, yeah, obviously the better single by a landslide there. Oh, I can't say landslide. It was like two points. Uh, audio listeners, I have the scores on the screen, like on the YouTube screen, so that's why I'm kind of referencing it. It's a two-point difference, so it's not that big. But anyways... uh. Some sort of transition effect to get those off the screen. Please and thank you, me in editing. I appreciate that. But now, if you could do another cool transition and bring up the words. That, oh, there they are. Rate the record. That's what it's time to do now. I have to tell you what I think about this album. What did I think about this album? Oh, wouldn't you like to know? Actually, you would like to know. That's why you're here. So, again, I'm not going to waste any more time. Uh, I did say it wasn't awful. It wasn't fantastic. It fell in the middle. And you know what the middle means here on Rate the Record? You've been, if you've been here long enough, you already do. That means B tier, baby. Of course, it's a B tier album. I thought, I honestly thought it was going to end up lower. I thought it was going to the C somewhere, maybe even D if it was bad enough. But it ended up as a B minus at 71.15%. I surprised even me. Now, I know there are some people who might want to rate it higher. Some people who are like, oh, no, you were way too generous with this. But trust me, my score surprised me. I was expecting lower. But here it is. Another B tier album for Rate the Record. 71.15 B minus tier album. And uh, editor me there. Just go ahead and get rid of those things off the screen. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Because now I can end the episode. Thank you very much for making it this far through the episode and checking out this album with me and if you did indeed check this album out with me do me a favor down in the comments below let me know what you thought about this album did you love it did you hate it do you agree or disagree with me how would you rank the songs how would you rate the record these are the things that i want to know and more so once again down in the comments of wherever you're listening co comment sections everywhere let me know 
what you think about this album. But of course, there's other places you can let me know what you think of this album. And that's, of course, over on the social media pages. And that can all be found over at ratetherecord.ca. Once again, ratetherecord.ca. The social media links are all there for you to find. And of course, the streaming links, the merch link, and of course, the RTR Club link as well. All at ratetherecord.ca. All righty then. That is the end of the episode. So once again, thank you very much for joining me. So next week is episode, what, 112 at this point. Uh, and I, I should have thought of a teaser. We used to think of teasers back in the old seasons of like what the, what's coming next week. I will say uh, it's one of the new metal pioneers. I'll leave it at that because I don't know what else to say without spoiling it. Uh, but he, you have a like a, a very narrow range of who it could possibly be, but it's going to be good. I've been waiting to do that one. But also, too, we are kind of entering into the Rate the Record anniversary week. The channel uh, like turns three kind of on August 23rd. That's when the channel was kind of created. And then August 30th, Friday, August 30th. So next week, after we've watched 112, 113 is coming out on the Friday because August 30th is the official three year anniversary. The first first upload we ever did on rate the record podcast so i decided to do the anniversary episode on friday august 30th episode 113 and if you've been around the podcast you know exactly what that episode's going to be if not you can just go back through the catalog and find hints and stuff like that i think you'll I think you'll figure it out pretty quickly. So you know exactly what to anticipate. And there's also a special live stream happening on Friday. Oh, not live stream, but I mean, more will be explained later. Regardless, there's a lot happening that day. There's a lot happening in the anniversary week. I hope you'll enjoy, uh, you'll enjoy it and join me then. But until then, I'm going to go ahead and leave you. You can go ahead and listen to awesome music, and I'll see you again real soon. Take care, friends. <laughs> <laughs>